Russian forces accelerate pace of offensive operations amid rising casualties. Experts at the Institute for the Study of War ISW have concluded that Russian troops are fast-tracking offensive operations across the entire war zone in Ukraine while mitigating likely increased manpower and material losses. The ISW noted that Lieutenant General Kirill Budinov, head of defense intelligence of Ukraine, stated that Ukraine expects Russian offensive activities to step up in late spring and early summer. Late spring or early summer, we expect an increase in Russian offensive efforts, especially in Donbass. Budinov said he explained that the Russians may try to scatter Ukrainian efforts on the front with mass attacks, but Ukraine is preparing for this. He characterized the current situation at the front as rather difficult but controlled because the Russians do nothing unpredictable. Ukraine's chief intelligence officer does not expect major changes on the front line until the Russian offensive begins. In addition, analysts pointed out that Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky had previously stated that Russia's primary offensive efforts could begin in late May or June. The ISW has recently observed that Russian forces intensified the tempo of their offensive operations across the theater, including by conducting a roughly reinforced, company-sized, mechanized assault toward Chasiv Yar on the 4th of April, and continues to assess that the Russian military appears to be successfully mitigating likely increased manpower and material losses. Zelensky and senior Ukrainian military officials have recently cautioned that security assistance delays have caused Ukraine to cede the initiative on the battlefield to Russia and that the Ukrainian military cannot plan a successful counteroffensive or defense unless it is certain about when and what kind of aid Ukraine will obtain. The ISW continues to assess that delays in Western security assistance are forcing Ukraine's defense forces to make tough decisions about prioritizing certain defense aspects at the expense of countering the Russian military capability initiative or planning future counter-offensive operations as the ongoing debate in the US over military assistance rages on. Russian forces recently made confirmed advances near Avdiivka amid continued positional fighting along the entire line of contact. The US and Israel are sure that Iran is preparing to take revenge for the attack on the consulate in Damascus. This was reported by CBS News. According to U.S. intelligence estimates, a retaliatory strike could be carried out by a combination of drones and cruise missiles, the TV channel will not disclose the approximate time of the strikes. However, it is likely that the response to the attack in Damascus will be Israeli diplomatic facilities, sources believe that the strikes could happen next week, the channel also notes that it is still unclear where the drones and missiles will be launched from Iraq, Syria or Iran. The White House has previously expressed concern over the possibility of a full-scale war between Iran and Israel after an airstrike on the Iranian consulate in Syria. Recently, Iran and one of its key proxies vowed to respond to a strike widely attributed to Israel that demolished Iran's consulate in the Syrian capital of Damascus and killed 13, including two Iranian generals. Iran State TV reported that the country's Supreme National Security Council, a key decision-making body, met and decided on a required response to the strike. The report said the meeting was chaired by President Ebrahim Raisi, but provided no further details, the cowardly crime will not go unanswered, Raisi said on his office's website, according to Agents France Presa. Agents France Presa reports that Iran's supreme leader, Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, said on his official website that Israel will be punished for the attack against this background, the Israeli authorities decided to suspend the work of 28 diplomatic missions around the world. Russia ordered more ballistic missiles from Iran and North Korea, NATO claims. Russia has asked North Korea and Iran to supply more ballistic missiles to use against Ukraine, Reuters reported citing an unnamed NATO official. According to the report, Tehran intends to respond to Moscow's request. Although the transfer has not happened yet, it will likely take place once the details of the deal are ironed out. Iran has declared its intent to do this and that it will send ballistic missiles to Russia and we have no reason to believe it will not follow through, the source said. On February the 21st, Reuters reported, based on six sources, that Iran 
had sent a large shipment of ballistic missiles to Russia. According to three Iranian sources, Tehran provided Russia with Zulfagar missiles capable of hitting targets from 300 to 700 kilometers away. The provision includes many from the Fateh-110 family of short-range ballistic weapons, such as the Zulfagar, three Iranian sources said. The shipments began in early January after a deal was finalized in meetings late last year between Iranian and Russian military and security officials that took place in Tehran and Moscow. Another senior Iranian official said some of the missiles were sent to Russia by ship via the Caspian Sea, while others were transported by plane. North Korea has sent about 6,700 containers carrying millions of munitions to Russia since September in exchange for food as well as parts and raw materials for weapons manufacturing, according to officials. South Korean Defense Minister Shin Won-sik told reporters that the containers might carry more than 3 million 152mm artillery shells or 500,000 122mm rounds. Russia has used at least 20 North Korean ballistic missiles in attacks on Ukraine since last December, the security service of Ukraine said.